Welcome back to Factorio, and uh, today we're going to be looking at steel. Steel and tin, I think. Uh, we already started the last episode, at the very end of the last episode, processing bobmonium. Bobmonium turns into lead, uh, sorry, not lead, into glass and tin, so we have both of those available. The tin is really useful and important because in your construction you want to move on to the regular kind of vanilla yellow belt stuff uh, including underground belt and that as you can see needs the previous tier but it also needs tin and so you get tin you can't build any of this tier aside from the the inserters <laughs> that's the one exception to that uh, and otherwise you know we need basic circuit boards at some point as well and we need to set up that kind of uh, process but for right now, we have some tin starting to build up, and you can see uh, I'm just going to dump the glass for now. We will be using that, but that's because in addition to bomb or the bombonium presses into tin, it also presses into slag and uh, basically silicon. And of course, if you put that into a furnace, this is unsorted really at the moment. Uh, that's just going to go straight and, and turn straight into um, into glass. So that's uh, worthwhile for the moment. That will just produce me some a little bit of tin for me to work with. However, the other thing we're going to need is some steel to get started. We won't have, you know, full-on setups just yet, but, you know, we, we will do that eventually. So steel then. Steel in this game is just iron with some oxygen. And that does mean we need one of these, these chemical furnaces. So we can see here uh, we can feed in a basically a fluid input. And then we're going to be able to nominate uh, what we do otherwise. So uh, what we might do here, uh, we'll probably need to move this across a little bit, but let's just put it here to temporarily for now. OK, and then we can choose what we want to make this out of. So uh, make make with this, I should say, not make it out of. So this is going to make steel, oxygen and iron plate. And I bit off camera prepared basically some way of doing that. And I'm just going to make sure. Oops, I need to basically create a few more of those. Uh, we're going to make that go across to here and that can go maybe even all the way down there, possibly. Um, question mark. No, that was the limit. Ah, well, OK, so let's just go with straight pipe uh, wherever I have some. So just use stone for now. And that's going to feed in some hydrogen. We're going to need a little bit of uh, whatever we might use to burn here. Let me just drop that in there. And that's going to be just some uh, some of this charcoal for now. We will also want to start basically getting together the next sort of improvement on top of charcoal, which is carbon, I think, if I remember rightly. But for the now, this will do. And if I just take in, uh, let's say, 100 of you and just drop in 50 there, I will then just get some steel out of this thing. Yep, that's going to process into steel. So uh, I'm just going to put a power pole here in a box for now. And uh, we'll just have some of that produced. We are going to need steel for some of the upcoming recipes. So it's worthwhile you at least having some of it. And uh, we'll get back to more a little bit later. Speaking of charcoal, we do need to improve that. Now to improve it, we need to basically combine it with steam. Now remember when I said that this farm couldn't actually work. It, it wasn't automatic because it didn't have the room. Yes, once we have some steel, we could go and build it into uh, this hold whole thing while you go into these underground belts and then I should be able to get underneath and get that to be added to everything else. However, what I thought we'd try, and we can always rework it again later, is making space here and using this for something else. You see we've got charcoal going out there. Well, all we really actually want there is uh, for charcoal to head out uh, in some way. And uh, what I might well do is just reroute this. Yeah, I think we're going to reroute it. So hopefully that's going to be OK if I just remove this for a minute. I'm just going to get rid of these furnaces and we're going to send them um, up and uh, around. Um, yep, we're just going to send going that way, I think. Then we're going to have this basically picking stuff up just as we did before. But now we're going to use this space like this. OK, so we have the maximum amount of room that we can possibly have. And then we're going to want to put down some other things down, assuming that I can actually combine these things. So first of all, let's get this up and back, back and working as it was before, which is just basically to say I want to feed in um, probably hmm, probably like this, I think, just to give us the most room we can possibly have, which is to say I want to put in one there, one there. 
and then I will also do the same thing here like this and then we're just going to reconfigure these so this is going to pick up and drop this is going to pick up and drop from the same side so this is going to refuel everything and then uh, everything else uh, is going to be just fine I just need to basically get, get, pick it up from the left pick that up from the left and everything else should be sorted so in it goes that's going to start making charcoal I'm just going to make sure I start feeding this Okay, and then everything else uh, would work the same way it was it was before. So we could just feed out onto this sort of belt wherever we put it, like so for example here, and that could just go that way, and then I just build a few more and send it out. Okay, that all works, but now we can actually, uh, well, we should be able to <laughs> modify this. Whether we can do it in enough space is an entirely different thing. We want a, uh, a boiler, and I think I've already made one. Yeah, here's one, and it's quite large. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to need uh, basically some way of connecting this. Uh, yes, there we go. Is that close enough? Um, possibly. So there is our water supply, and if we put fuel in this, which we might be able to get from here to there, uh, possibly. Yeah, there it goes. We'll be able to get steam out of this thing. Although, uh, let's see how much steam is coming out of this. Generate steam, steam 200 of 200. So we have steam and we have um, charcoal. Combining both of those together gets us carbon. Uh, if we just have a look here, carbon. Okay, uh, carbon, uh, this carbon in particular, Angel's Petrochemical Processing. So two charcoal gets us three carbon. So two charcoal is four megajoules each. Okay, so that's eight megajoules, and we get nine megajoules out. Now, do remember that we're going to have to get some, some charcoal to basically produce the steam as well, so it's not just a free increase of one, but at least, you know, you get the idea. It, it should be an actual increase overall. And we're going to, need to basically combine them in a chemical plant. So if I just get a chemical plant, I think I've got one, that's going to need a fair amount of a reworking to get to go correctly. Um, yes. How am I going to connect you? I'm going to have to go one down, I think. Like that, I want to say. Maybe? Question mark? Um, yeah, let's just go for that. Let me just put that connecting to uh, different fluids. How's that got a different fluid? Let me just select carbon. Okay, uh, you shouldn't have any fluid in there right now. Oh, it's because it would connect to this. Okay, let's connect it to that one. And then on the output, of course, we would have our typical belt as before. Okay, so which means we just need to basically get the input into here and get that working. So for the input for this one, that will certainly work. Off it goes. That's going to start converting quite happily and then we also want this one to be fed in as well which might be more problematic uh what i think i'm going to do is just to switch things around a little bit i'm going to get myself an underground belt which i've got a couple already okay and we're just going to go this way and then that means i can move this one over here and thereby gain a little bit of extra space where I can use a couple of inserters. So let me just make four of them. And I can move basically charcoal from here to here, I think. Uh, maybe? Can we actually... Oh, no, we, that's fine. Yeah, we can just move it two spaces and then swing it around two spaces. It'll work fine. So, for example, here, I can basically say uh, pick up from all the way left that way so it's just going to feed it that way that's going to work fine and this one is already working fine so everything now will uh hopefully work what we may end up doing is running out of fuel here if this isn't kept up to date because this thing is competing with this thing and they're both pulling from the same source the same furnace so that might need, improve, need improvement later but in the meantime we're now starting to get carbon heading out there so that's really quite nice and whether that will actually serve us longer term, I don't know. Uh, the only problem with this is that I think... Let me cut off this one, because this one requires charcoal explicitly up here, I think. Uh, do you require charcoal explicitly? Yes, you do. So we're going to need charcoal in some way for that. Ugh, that's annoying. Otherwise, I just convert across the carbon. Um, is there any way for me to get some charcoal out of here 
I would say no. <laughs> well, there is, but I'm not sure whether we actually would like it or not. What, what's the space like outside? Um, yeah, I have I have the room to do this. Um, this is going to make me feel horrible, but... Um, technically, I can just do this. Okay. And... I can just hook this up here. Okay, and we do do exactly the same thing here. Uh, however, that means I now have an extra output here. So if I just take that away for a second, and I feed that that way, that's going to feed to the power stations that just don't care. Like a honey badger, they just do not care whatsoever. And I um, we'll wonder if I can actually feed out there. And here we can actually feed some, some charcoal. If I had charcoal. This is not charcoal, it's wood bricks. Um, yes. Uh, how am I going to feed charcoal out onto here? Uh, I can, I guess. Uh, put one there. And uh, we're going to pick up two. Uh, put to the right. Yep. <laughs> okay. Convoluted. Yes, that's Factorio. <laughs> and that will come out this output. Hopefully. I may need to move that balancer in order for this to come out. It may need to have at least one belt like that. So, uh, given that I don't need to send this all the way around the back anymore, that's a possibility. Um, I just need to rework it. So let's just grab you. And we're going to just send you this way. And you can go this way, just as we did before. Yep, that's exactly what it needs. And then over here, I'm just going to need to rework these. Uh, somehow, probably just with underground belt, but if I just put them in, uh, wow, I'm going to need to just do this, I think. Okay, and everything else is still connected, so I don't need to do anything else. Okay, that's all reconfigured. This is all now running on carbon, and then we have some charcoal on this output. Now, once it backs up, and it has backed up pretty quickly, that's fine, because we're not using it charcoal up very fast whatsoever, so everything else should get bypassed here, and should continue to output carbon. And you can see already, uh, we are we're having a problem on the output. We need to feed this faster. And that's not a problem either, because we can just use two of these. Like this. Ugh, need to stop doing that. Need to press Q, not escape. <laughs> Must remember. So, pick up and drop. Pick up and drop. It's because escape gets me out of that particular thing instead. Uh, the, the dialogue window, the modal. Okay, and that's going to evacuate pretty much fine. So that's fine as far as that's concerned. And that's processing. So I should get a gain out of that. How much of a gain? Well, I don't yet know, but uh, it, it certainly will be a gain of some kind. The other alternative thing we can do here is just reroute this thing. Uh, obviously, we've got to... Ooh, oops. Now those will actually turn on. Um, we could reroute this just to not have this going around the back like that. Uh, that's uh, going to be straightforward, I think. Let me just have both of you together. And then we'll just put you back this way. Like that. And connect everything back up. There we go. So now we should be able to recover a whole bunch of belt. And clean everything up quite nicely. And then just connect it all back up again. Cool. So we've got a charcoal supply. Uh, I suppose we could send it down that end and save some, some, some space in the middle, but that'll be a quick reroute if we need to do that. Otherwise, we have an improved amount of power. And everything in here is still running just about fine, I think. So, yeah, quite happy with that setup. And that's two buildings pretty much done. Moving on. Now, given that we've moved on to better fuel sources, what we may also want to do is move on from these burner electric generators. Uh, they produce up to 400 kilowatts. Now, we have the, the vanilla steam engine, and that produces a whole lot more, 900. So it's equivalent of two of each of these with one steam engine. 
Now, we don't quite know if that's a bit or actually overall because the steam engine doesn't take in carbon or anything else. It just takes in steam and it's the same ratio as in vanilla. So two steam engines, one boiler. So I want to basically make a couple of those and a boiler. And we'll see how well it actually does by comparison to these burner electric generators. Um, very often, I don't bother doing the maths, I'll just actually put it down. We'll see how it actually works in operation. And you'll easily see that just by looking at the power figures uh, when, when this is coming in. So to get the space for that, we are going to need to just bring down uh, some of our existing uh, wind infrastructure. And we won't remove these until we're happy with the replacements. All we're going to do for that replacement is basically put a boiler in and we're going to need to feed in water from somewhere. Thankfully, we've got water close by, not, not too far away there, and we can probably feed it in from across across the, this little bay area here, and put it whichever way around we want. So I'm just going to leave some space uh, here, something like this. There we go. And that will do with the steam engine. Is the steam engine already done? I think they are. Yes, steam engines. So we'll connect one up to start with. You can see the second one. Uh, the second one will have problems with this. But we can always remove, uh, remove, <laughs> move the offshore pump just fine, and uh, not, you know have no problems there. Or indeed, we can just build an offshore pump down here. That actually might be even easier. So if I just build that and just send it uh, underground. Okay, and then we should have an input for our boilers. We also have some belt, so we can get those fed in. And off it goes. It's going to start producing uh, steam. Yep, with carbon. And this thing needs hooking up to our power infrastructure. But otherwise, it should work like a normal vanilla uh, plant. And how are we doing now? Well, that's getting better. That's getting better. But let's take a look at the... 10 minute view of production and you will see uh well we'll see you see that's just jumped up this is our new steam engine so different colors than everything else this has dropped down presumably because it doesn't need to output power maybe uh and everything else is the wind turbines i just disabled a few of them so it may go down a little bit so i need to keep on my eye on this for a little while and uh, hopefully we can switch over from one type to the other now, I don't normally lay them out like this, but given that I don't have as much land as I would like just yet, it keeps building up, but we don't have huge amounts unless I leave the game on for hours. Uh, we've got these two in parallel like this, just feeding off the same steam input. These output 60 per second, these consume 30 per second, so that's fine. And I've just removed the inserters from both of these, just so they don't starve this of the fuel it actually needs. So you can see we're up to 6 megawatts, and it's absolutely fine. So uh, I think we can actually get rid of more of this and uh, we may be able to fit more stuff in here and get it running. Um, what we are going to do, I think, is just probably convert over from wind over here and I will just fill in this sort of land as we actually get it. We'll convert over to sort of vanilla steam engines. But in the meantime, we can just lose these, I think. And um, yeah, we can go from there. That's fine. Those are going to be OK. So we'll move on and our charcoal is still fine. And let's move on. Have all my has all my steel finished? It has. So, uh, well, some of it has. Uh, what are we missing? Oh, iron. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't convert one to one, uh, unfortunately. So you may have to go and keep getting more and more steel to feed in. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we need to then probably do some more research. I was going to do steam engine two, but not just yet. I don't think. Let's take a look at what we have. Indoor lighting. That's kind of nice. Um, green algae processing. Uh, is that the algae farm mark two? It is. Having upgrades to those with just steel plates seems like a nice thing to have. And of course, that should get us more, more stuff out, basically. And uh, we'll likely consume more electricity, but also output more algae. So, um, yes, I think we're going to do that. And we're going to just need to make more, more of these. Now, I obviously have been handcrafting these, but at some points, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> So we're going to need to, first of all, start making electromagnetic cores. Uh, so core, if I just type that, uh, this is just two iron plate, easily enough. And then the other thing, um, let's just actually right click on this, is the electromagnetic coils, and that's just four copper plate, easy enough. Two iron, four copper is one red uh, electromagnet. So we have iron and copper here. Um, yes, I keep on nicking it. 
on my own projects and uh, I've lots of copper in my inventory, but I also can make a bunch of different assembly machines. So assembly machines, why don't we just grab some of those? I'm going to want three of them at least, and we'll have them making our red cell, uh, red, um, red science packs basically, and have them being done automatically. So just grab that lab and we'll build everything up here. Um, can we actually just go underground here? We probably can. Yeah, I think I'm just going to feed them upwards and we'll get them all connected. Uh, or even, hmm, I was going to do like a long head inserter, but no, that's fine. This is going to be okay. I just need to reroute a few things. So let's just get ourselves a uh, bit of land just to get some belt out this side. And there we go. And then we'll do the same thing here with an underground section. Uh, once I have that built underground i'll need to wait for them to finish making the the circuit boards and that's another thing i need to go and do but we just need lots of land space to do it so yeah uh, i do have another one of these factory buildings in my inventory i have been holding on to it yet as to what we actually use it for uh people in the comments section can actually decide i was tempted to go and put this this whole plant here for uh washing in there because all that we would need to do is feed in muddy water, which comes from here. And out of it, we would get just mud and just um, so hydrogen sulfide. Nothing else would come out. So that just means that we could scale up in there, if possibly, and maybe have two of these sort of, sort of setups and have everything running that way. It does mean, however, that uh, maybe I couldn't put some more of this stuff up here in there, but yeah, it's not too bad, not too bad. So uh, yeah, if you've got any particular sort of um, suggestions there, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll just pick next episode as far as that's concerned. In the meantime, we will just get this going. So uh, let's just get you going and uh, you, there we go. And our assembly machines should be ready. They are, and one, Ooh, that's a shame. Why don't I just put you like that? Okay, and then we'll just feed in off the side on that one. And then I have another assembly machine here, and we're going to feed them both in. I'll need some more inserters, of course. But other than that, this should be pretty simple for a recipe. Uh, this one is going to be the um, the magnet. Uh, it's not. It's not the. It's not this one. It's not the copper cable. Uh, it is going to be. Oh, what was it in? JNEI electromagnetic coils. It's coils. I was thinking of the word coil. There we are. Electromagnetic coil. So coil it is. And this one is core. Okay, they're going to both work fine. And this one is the basically the red science pack. Cool. And this is all set up quite nicely. Uh, I just need to connect up power. And then feed in from left, feed in from right, that's already working. And this should start making this. So at this point, we can just drop down our lab, wherever I put it in my inventory. There it is. Can't build on deep water. Well, we'll just build it here instead. And pick up, drop off. So that will work once we're actually feeding stuff from these boxes outward. Uh, for the meantime, I just want some to be made in the background. So I'm just going to feed in a bunch of stuff there. And uh, I think I will feed in, I don't know, um, that should be enough. Uh, iron I'm always short of, so I'm, I'm hesitating to actually feed this with iron. But uh, uh, okay, I guess I'll put 20 in there and have it starting and uh, feeding in. So green algae processing is going to carry on. I am going to need to scale up the amount of, uh, basically the amount of ore that we get. But that will just happen over time as we actually start to expand outwards. Or will it expand now? Well, a little bit at least. So we have our mineral sludge coming out of our, um, our filtration unit here. And you can see on the input that we are pretty much stuck on the output. Watch this. Yep, and it sticks and we're not using all of it. So we could always put more bobmonium in. But bobmonium for tin, it's okay. It's worthwhile having, but not necessarily the only thing. And right now, we're probably going to want lots of iron. So what can we do for that? Well, we can do, as you might imagine, we can reroute uh, all of that stuff and we can send it somewhere else. In particular, I can send that uh, out sort of this direction. OK, and we will be able to basically put it here and then send that 
to another filtration unit. Uh, is it filtration? Uh, crystallizer, even. So crystallizer. And you may remember uh, we can actually um, we can actually decide what all we want from this mineral sludge. It doesn't have to be uh, particularly bobmonium. So once that's actually done, I can put one down. This will just produce the direct input for this, the crushed sapphirite or stereotite, which is leaning as far as output towards iron. It's like two iron, one copper, I remember rightly, which will go through our system and get brought to here and then fed into everything else. So you get the idea. We're going to use the extra mineral sludge for what it's intended for, which is to make more, um, more ore. And here we are. We can decide what we want for output. Uh, we can, well, basically that's not the recipe we actually want. We want this one. Uh, mineral sludge, four seconds, produces uh, basically some sapphire ore. So we'll have that done. And then we'll just make another inserter, have that be ready, and then just basically dump it in up here next to these. Uh, this won't be precisely balanced, but it's not too much of a problem to get started with. Uh, we're just using up hopefully some of the excess. Uh, what I think we can also do here, however, is also craft an overflow valve. Now, if I craft an overflow valve, what I'm going to do is choose which one of these gets the actual mineral sludge first. Okay, so what I'm going to choose is just uh, to overflow into the iron. So if we've got anything spare, i.e. for above 80%, just send it to iron, please. And if it will, uh, that should work. So there you can see it's 80%. And then it will go and flow beyond this point as and when that gets produced. And you can see we are starting to get uh, sapphirite quite quickly. So let's just grab our inserter. Dump that in. And pick up. And that is, or should be, oh, hang on. Does it need to be crushed first? Oh, it needs to be crushed first. I put it in the wrong place. Do do do. Uh, let's just move this. Yes, just just let's just ignore this. This. Let's just move it back where it should have been. There we go. <laughs> so we need to feed it into here, not into anywhere else. Do I even have room for this? Uh, I could probably just about fit it. Uh, I need to move this. I think. Yeah, we need to move you. So why don't I just get uh, you? So connect it this way. And will I now have, what was this? What was this even inserting? Who knows? Uh, it's fine for now. Nothing broke. Nothing broke. Okay. <laughs> That's my usual check. Uh, can we fit stuff in here? Uh, that's going to need to move that box to be moved. Uh, that's fine. Okay, let's just move it that way. Uh, the things you do in Factorio just to get something working. Honestly, uh, crystallizer. Uh, let's just put all the stone in there and in fact can the crushed stone just actually make us more land uh that's mud uh, we may be able to make more land from crushed stone but in the meantime uh crystallizer can go back down there we go and that can go there this can feed in this can connect somewhere uh yes And one straight piece. That's not going to leave enough room for an overflow. So we're going to have to just feed it with straight pieces and use an overflow that way. So let's feed it that way. And then we'll just put straight pieces. There we go. And we select it now. Now you should work. So whenever it overflows, yep, it's going to get start getting some mineral sludge. And that should hit 80%-ish. There or thereabouts. And then get... Provided and turned into uh, sapphirite. Did I say stereotype before? I meant sapphirite, if not. So, yeah, it's just going to feed in slowly and be used up as and when it needs to be. Uh, the stuff we already got here was sapphirite ore, and we'll just dump that into the system and everything else will just process as normal. Now we're up to four of these traditional steam engines rather than these burner uh, generators, and they're, they're coping just fine as long as we feed them enough power, that is, uh, enough fuel. Uh, you can see we're well ahead and everything is working pretty nicely. So, yeah, I've started to remove the old ones and we'll probably remove them all the rest. The only thing shortage I've got right now is the iron. So uh, I've reversed that um, overflow valve. 
it's now feeding to just the iron and then overflowing to produce bobmonium for tin if we get any extra so that is all going this way and all going through and uh, yep that is going to work fine uh, in the meantime it's just actually waiting for that to occur so yep i will leave it there for now i moved the clarifier over it onto the right hand side plenty of room for that and there'll be plenty of room here i've been filling this in with sand from that crushed stone supply and we can just feed our steam engines out and replace these wind turbines. Not that the wind turbines are any problem, they just consume a lot of room for the actual amount of power you get out of them. If you have a look at the power, uh, four of these steam engines are currently producing 2.8 megawatts. Five of the other ones only produce, you know, well, pretty much half of it, uh, you know, 60% of it. So, yeah, um, we'd need like, I don't know, eight or nine of these. And that, that uh, tallies quite well with the output you get from the JEI. Uh, any men fnei <laughs> and then the uh the, the poor wind generators they're miserable at 1.6 megawatts for all of these so yes in terms of density uh they're not very polluting of course but they, in terms of density they are um terrible uh just like solar really but they are free energy so you know you can't really complain that that loudly uh, from here, I think next episode we're going to be doing uh, circuit boards because it's coming to the end of this episode. We've been improving quite a lot this episode, so plenty to get on with. I'm going to move this washing plant, unless anyone has another brilliant idea, indoors next episode. We'll put it right here, right next to this one, which will free up some more space on the ground and uh, keep everything nice and organized inside these buildings, just like we've been doing in the Satisfactory. Yes, shameless plug for Satisfactory series if you haven't already started watching that. So take a look at that on the channel. Otherwise, as always, guys, it's coming to the end of the episode. So if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, if you to subscribe, share, put comments down below for your fellow players, and we'll see you next episode for some more Factorio C Block with Factorissimo. No, need a catchier name than that. Yeah. Anyway, lots and lots of tin plate. <laughs> Thanks for watching.